Welcome to this edition of Journals of Spiritual Discovery, brought to you by spiritualteachers.org. I'm your host, Sean Nevins. Hello, and welcome to Journals of Spiritual Discovery. Before we begin, I have one favor to ask, which is to please leave a review on Amazon for my book, Subtraction, The Simple Math of Enlightenment. We're up to 67 reviews, and the goal is to get to 100. You don't even have to purchase the book on Amazon to leave a review. I've received a lot of positive feedback about the book, so anything that you can do to help others find it is really appreciated. Just search for Subtraction, The Simple Math of Enlightenment, and you'll find it on Amazon. Thanks for helping me out with that. This month's episode is a continuation of the induction series, in which my aim is to focus on writings which carry a message beneath the words. I like Franklin Merrill Wolf's description of these mystic writings. He said that when the voice of the silence speaks into the relative world, the meaning lies between the words, as it were, rather than in the direct content of the words themselves. Richard Rose referred to the power of these writings when he said, If you are interested in looking for essence, from the point of the process observer, you can be stimulated only by writings of inspiration rather than reason or direction. He referred his students to the three books of the Absolute as an example. Now, while Rose used the term inspirational, clearly these are not necessarily inspirational writings like you typically find collected under that banner. Rather, their writings which carry the living word. My reading this episode is from the book Talks with Sri Ramana Maharshi. It's a translation of dialogues with Ramana Maharshi from 1935 to 1939. It's another one of those books that was a constant companion when I was living in a cabin on Richard Rose's farm. It's one to be savored in small doses rather than be read cover to cover and ticked off your list like a conquest. So in that spirit, here are two exchanges with visitors to the ashram from 1936. January 26, 1936. Sri Bhagavan said, The state of equanimity is the state of bliss. The declaration in the Vedas, I am this or that, is only an aid to gain equanimity of mind. Disciple, so it is wrong to begin with a goal, is it? Maharshi, if there be a goal to be reached, it cannot be permanent. The goal must already be there. We seek to reach the goal with the ego, but the goal exists before the ego. What is in the goal is even prior to our birth, in other words, to the birth of the ego. Because we exist, the ego appears to exist too. If we look on the self as the ego, then we become the ego. If as the mind, we become the mind. If as the body, we become the body. It is the thought which builds up sheets in so many ways. The shadow on the water is found to be shaking. Can anyone stop the shaking of the shadow? If it should cease to shake, you would not notice the water, but only the light. Similarly, take no notice of the ego and its activities, but see only the light behind. The ego is the I-thought. The true I is the self. Disciple It is one step to realization. Maharshi Realization is already there. The state free from thoughts is the only real state. There is no such action as realization. Is there anyone who is not realizing the self? Does anyone deny his own existence? Speaking of realization, it implies two selves, the one to realize, the other to be realized. What is not already realized is sought to be realized. Once we admit our existence, 
How is it that we do not know ourself? Disciple. Because of the thoughts, the mind. Maharshi. Quite so. It is the mind that stands between and veils our happiness. How do we know that we exist? If you say because of the world around us, then how do you know that you existed in deep sleep? Disciple. How to get rid of the mind? Maharshi. Is it the mind that wants to kill itself? The mind cannot kill itself. So your business is to find the real nature of the mind. Then you will know that there is no mind. When the self is sought, the mind is nowhere. Abiding in the self, one need not worry about the mind. Disciple. How to get rid of fear? Maharshi. What is fear? It is only a thought. If there is anything besides the self, there is reason to fear. Who sees the second? First, the ego arises and sees objects as external. If the ego does not arise, the self alone exists, and there is no second. For anything external to oneself implies the seer within. Seeking it, there will arise no doubt, no fear, not only fear, all other thoughts centered around the ego will disappear along with it. Disciple This method seems to be quicker than the usual one of cultivating qualities alleged necessary for salvation. Maharshi Yes, all bad qualities center around the ego. When the ego is gone, realization results by itself. There are neither good nor bad qualities in the self. The self is free from all qualities. Qualities pertain to the mind only. It is beyond quality. If there is unity, there will also be duality. The numeral one gives rise to other numbers. The truth is neither one nor two. It is as it is. Disciple The difficulty is to be in the thought-free state. Maharshi Leave the thought-free state to itself. Do not think of it as pertaining to you. Just as when you walk, you involuntarily take steps, so too in your actions. But the thought-free state is not affected by your actions. Disciple, what is it that is discriminative in action? Maharshi, discrimination will be automatic, intuitive. Disciple, so intuition alone matters. Intuition develops also. Maharshi, those who have discovered great truths have done so in the still depths of the self. The ego is like one's shadow thrown on the ground. If one attempts to bury it, it will be foolish. The self is only one. If limited, it is the ego. If unlimited, it is infinite and is the reality. The bubbles are different from one another and numerous, but the ocean is only one. Similarly, the egos are many, whereas the self is one and only one. When told that you are not the ego, realize the reality. Why do you still identify yourself with the ego? It is like saying, don't think of the monkey while taking medicine. It is impossible. Similarly, it happens with common folk. When the reality is mentioned, why do you continue to meditate? The significance must be traced and understood. It is not enough to repeat the bare words or think of them. Reality is simply the loss of the ego. Destroy the ego by seeking its identity. 
because the ego is no entity. It will automatically vanish and reality will shine forth by itself. This is the direct method. Whereas all other methods are done only retaining the ego. In those paths there arise so many doubts and the eternal question remains to be tackled finally. But in this method, the final question is the only one and is raised from the very beginning. No sadhanas are necessary for engaging in this quest. There is no greater mystery than this. Ourselves being the reality, we seek to gain reality. We think that there is something hiding our reality and that it must be destroyed before the reality is gained. It is ridiculous. The day will dawn when you will yourself laugh at your past efforts. That which will be on the day you laugh is also here and now. Disciple so it is a great game of pretending? Maharshi. Yes. In Yoga Vashista it is said, What is real is hidden from us, but what is false is revealed as true. We are actually experiencing the reality only. Still, we do not know it. Is it not a wonder of wonders? The quest who am I, is the axe with which to cut off the ego. June 9th, 1936. Maharshi. How do you meditate? Disciple. I begin to ask myself, who am I? Eliminate body is not I. The breath is not I. The mind is not I. And I am not able to proceed further. Maharshi, well, that is so far as the intellect goes. Your process is only intellectual. Indeed, all the scriptures mention the process only to guide the seeker to know the truth. The truth cannot be directly pointed out. Hence, this intellectual process. You see, the one who eliminates all the not-I cannot eliminate the I. To say, I am not this, or I am that, there must be the I. This I is only the ego, or the I thought. After the rising up of this I thought, all other thoughts arise. The I thought is therefore the root thought. If the root is pulled out, all others are at the same time uprooted. Therefore, seek the root I. Question yourself, who am I? Find out its source. Then all these will vanish, and the pure self will remain ever. Disciple, how to do it? Maharshi, the I is always there in deep sleep, in dream, and in wakefulness. The one in sleep is the same as that who now speaks. There is always the feeling of I. Otherwise, do you deny your existence? You do not. You say I am. Find out who is. Disciple, even so, I do not understand. I, you say, is the wrong I now. How to eliminate this wrong I, Maharshi? You need not eliminate the wrong I. How can I eliminate itself? All that you need do is to find out its origin and abide there. Your efforts can extend only thus far. Then the beyond will take care of itself. You are helpless there. No effort can reach it. Disciple 
If I am always here and now, why do I not feel so? Maharshi, that is it. Who says it is not felt? Does the real I say it or the false I? Examine it. You will find it is the wrong I. The wrong I is the obstruction. And it has to be removed in order that the true I may not be hidden. The feeling that I have not realized is the obstruction to realization. In fact, it is already realized. There is nothing more to be realized. Otherwise, the realization will be new. It has not existed so far. It must take place hereafter. What is born will also die. If realization be not eternal, it is not worth having. Therefore, what we seek is not that which must happen afresh. It is only that which is eternal, but not now known due to obstructions. It is that we seek. All that we need do is remove the obstruction. That which is eternal is not known to be so because of ignorance. Ignorance is the obstruction. Get over this ignorance and all will be well. The ignorance is identical with the I thought. Find its source and it will vanish. The I thought is like a spirit which, although not palpable, rises up simultaneously with the body, flourishes, and disappears with it. The body consciousness is the wrong I. Give up this body consciousness. It is done by seeking the source of I. The body does not say I am. It is you who say I am the body. Find out who this I is. Seeking its source, it will vanish. Thank you for listening. I do have one special request during the induction series. And no, I'm not going to ask you to buy anything, but I am asking all my listeners to please leave a review on Amazon for my book, Subtraction, The Simple Math of Enlightenment. I know that a lot of you have read it, and if we can get a hundred reviews on Amazon, I'm told that will really help the book stand out and get noticed. So if you enjoyed Subtraction, please go to Amazon.com, type in Subtraction, The Simple Math of Enlightenment, and leave a review. It only takes a few minutes, and you'll help many other seekers simply by giving your thoughts about the book. You don't have to have purchased the book on Amazon in order to leave a review there. So thanks, I hope you can do that for me. And I will see you again on the next episode.